Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Batten here. And today, we're talking about one of the super cruisers, large cruisers, whatever you want to call them, that most seem to have forgotten about. And that is the Tier 9 French large super cruiser, again, whatever you want to call it, the Carnot. Before we get into this any further, if you guys don't mind, please drop a like and leave a comment down below to offer up to the algorithm gods. Finessing the algorithm is 90% of doing YouTube nowadays, so if you guys wouldn't mind doing that, please do that. Also, again, if you haven't been watching the, these videos this week, I am sick with the flu, so if I sound a little weird, I do apologize, but can't do much about that. Anyway, on to the Carnot. So the Carnot is the first of the French large cruisers. Well, the first, I should say, because there hasn't been any others added in. Now, what the Carnot is itself, it is one of the, uh, not one, I think it's actually two of the proposed Dunkirk-class battleship designs that Wargaming took and kind of just mashed together into one ship. Now, the Carnot is, in my opinion, a pretty decent ship, but you don't really see too many of them around. Um, shoot, even when I was playing, I didn't run into another one, and matchmaking is kind of supposed to, you know, kind of shove the same ships together on the opposing teams, supposedly at least, but of course that's a, that, that, that is up for question given recent events. But yeah, so let's take a look at this ship and talk about maybe why she's not out and about as much as I think she should be. So, um... First off, when it comes to her armor, she's actually pretty well protected. She has a 25mm bow, and her armor belt is 30mm, and then her main armor belt is 180mm, and her stern is 25, uh, stern deck's 25 along the bow deck, midsection is 36. Her citadel is very well protected indeed. First off, it is below the waterline. And then it does have that nice meaty 180 millimeter section coming down on top of it. So this ship is one that you're probably not going to be able to citadel unless you catch it hard turning. And even then, um, I haven't been citadel too much in it unless you get slapped or something with like you know 20 inch guns like a Shigashima or um, a Satsuma or an Incomparable or something like that. It does sit out, sit up out of the water a lot. Like, the ship stands up out of the water, but that good citadel protection does kind of help keep it from getting absolutely god-slapped. In terms of its uh, HP, she has 66,450 HP. Um, I do not have survivability expert on my commander, which, by the way, here's my commander build, in case you missed it up at the start of the video. I do have, I believe, Jean Henri on here. So I have the improved turret rotation with the greased gears skill and the improved adrenaline rush going on this ship in the gameplay you get you got going on in the background. Alright, so her guns, obviously one of the most important features of a ship. So she has a bit of a weird setup. She has 2 by 3 305mm guns, and then she has one quad 305mm turret up here at the front too. Very French here. So you get 10 guns on a cruiser, which is pretty good. I mean, that, that's a lot of shells you're throwing at the target. And in a lot of cases in this game, accuracy through volume is very much a thing. And it is very much a thing here too with the Carnot. Her per turret accuracy isn't really that great. Her vertical dispersion does seem to be pretty decent. If you notice a lot of times the shells, they may spread out a bit. But in many cases when the shells do spread out, it's very conveniently the length of most like tier 8, 7, and 9 cruisers and battleships. Uh, vertically, they don't really move around too much. There's a little bit here and there, and every now and then you get a weird salvo. But, yeah, when you can get all your guns on target and throw all 10 shells at the target, you're probably going to hit what you're what you're aiming at, which is, I mean, it's a tier 9 cruiser, so hopefully that would be the case, but that is very much the case here with the Carnot. So, uh, more about the guns. So, these guns have a 25-second reload time, which is, ah, pain. That is a very long reload time. You can take the um, reload module to get that down by 12%, but I don't have the range module on here. Uh, more on that in a second. You have 213 meters of maximum dispersion at 
of course, uh, 21.5 kilometers with the range mod that I have on here. Her HE is absolutely anemic. 4,250 maximum damage on a 305 millimeter shell. That is terrible. 26% fire chance, 51 millimeters of pin, 905 meters a second coming out the tubes. The AP is where it's at, though. It's got that great French AP. 9,135 maximum damage, and those come out the tubes at 870 meters a second. So just right there with the guns so um this is a french cruiser has a lot of the same characteristics of the french cruiser mainline they did a pretty good job of including a lot of the pros and cons of the mainline into this premium except they forgot the he now uh french cruisers of course their he is one of the main ways that they bring in their damage because french cruisers are good at kiting uh, they stay angled, play with their throttle, use their engine boost, and they keep throwing HE in your face. Then when you, when you show broadside, they're switching over to their AP, and they, then they chunk your broadsides. The Carno can't really stick with its HE. The only time I would say the HE is, well, not even preferable, but the only time you would even want to think about using it would be if someone's bowing to you and they're staying bowing, you know, you throw a salvo or two in their face and they're just staying bow in then yeah switch over to the he and try to set a couple of fires which you know 26 percent chance with the 10 guns doesn't sound bad but it, when you remember what the spurgeon's like you know he's got that nice spread on the um on the uh on the horizon on the on the horizontal spread yeah, that can be a bit of an issue sometimes, but that's the only time I would really use the HE. Uh, that, or unless there's like, you're 125% sure that there's like only only DDs around you. Other than that, I'd keep the AP loaded, because the AP hits very hard. If you catch somebody's broadside with this, you can easily chunk them for like 20 or 30k. Uh, German battleships are, uh, of course, some of the easiest targets. You aim at that upper belt, you get all 10 shells going, you're going to chunk them for like 15 to 25k. It's great. Cruisers, good god, if you catch a cruiser broadside, they're, they're, they're getting citadeled. Unless it's something like another super cruiser or cruiser with a submerged citadel, you're citadeling them. There, there's no question about that if you catch them broadside and the shells connect. And you aim correctly too. That's how good that these AP shells are, and that is definitely what you want to stick with here. Now, another thing, too, is that with the turrets, the angles are not great, especially from the rear. So, you also can't kite as well as the other French cruisers can, even though everything else about the ship is pretty good for cutting the armor is good the the ship is fast and maneuverable like the french cruisers but the turret angles from the rear are, 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 are abysmal you're not going to be able to get the front two turrets on target and again the per turret accuracy isn't really there to where you can rely on that third rear turret to just do all the work so that is the downsides of her artillery there so um her AA, it's it's not bad. It's, it has an A rating of 81. She has 13 of the 20 millimeter Orlikins. She has one dual mounted 20 millimeter uh, 20 millimeter gun and 12 quad mounted 40 millimeter Bofors. And then the um, 1600 millimeter secondaries are dual purpose. And no, you can't secondary spec. We well, can't secondary spec any of these super cruisers now. But the secondaries on this ship are not worth trying to build into in any way, shape, or form. So the AA rating is. Um, it's 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 okay if definitely if you if you're with an aa buddy or not even an aa buddy but just with another ship you, you'll make the cv pay for going after you if they're not that great at uh dodging flag uh maneuverability great 36.2 knot maximum base maximum speed with the speed flag uh turning circle race 870 meters bro shift time 14.4 seconds it doesn't feel feel that sluggish especially when you have the engine boost going she doesn't get one of those so I'd say not the most maneuverable uh, ship ever, but definitely one of the more maneuverable super cruisers. Or large cruiser, whatever you want to call it. Concealment with a module and skill, you get it down to 12 kilometers, which is about average for one of these ships. It's, I think, on the larger side, if I'm, re if I'm remembering the other values correctly. Um, but not great, not terrible. So for her gimmicks, so she gets a heal, which regens 
398 HP per second. You get your choice of an engine boost, a fighter, or a spotter, and that is that does suck that the engine boost modules in the same slot as the fighter or the spotter and this is why I went with the uh, range mod because you know tier 9 and tier 10 the ranges are so far out there now um, most cruisers especially at that tier have spotters or have decent range and if you want to get that usable range you gotta you know make a choice do you want the engine boost or do you want to take the range mod I took the injured boost and I took the range mod instead. So, yeah, the injured boost, in my opinion, is very much worth it. I mean, it's it's a French cruiser, it's a French ship. Why would you not want the engine boost? All right. So, uh, besides that, she also gets your choice of hydro or DFAA. I take hydro. It's great for dodging torps. Again, your A is good enough to where if you have a buddy with you, you'll be fine. So, overall, the Carno. It is very odd, in my mind, that we don't see more of these around, because the ship is pretty good at what it does. Um, and it's decent at kite well not decent, it's really good at kiting, despite the abysmal turret angles, because the ship is maneuverable enough, and is well armored enough, to where if you practice with it, you can get all your 10 guns on target, throw the AP in their face, um, and snap back before they can really have time to retaliate against you but the amount of ship that does stick out of the water is pretty not great and that upper armor belt that is 30 millimeters that you know will allow you to bounce quite a bit um it is vulnerable to you know ships that can he pin he uh, pin whose ships ships whose he can pin 30 millimeters of armor and above which is quite a bit at tier 9 and above and then of course you got the super ships now too and you know all the what does it take like 17 and a half inch guns so like you know republic's caliber and above to overmatch that as well but again with the engine boost going with the maneuverability of the ship if you're used to playing french cruisers you should be pretty comfortable kiting in this ship she's also really good at close quarters combat again that armor coming in there you you probably won't be able to sit out the ship from you know about 10 kilometers in thanks to that turtleback citadel and then the ap is really nasty at those ranges and at those ranges too you're connecting most of those 10 shells so the ship has one hell of a punch so i'm not sure if it's just that the meta is too far out to where you know at extreme ranges the ap is still decent but you know you're not chunking ships for 15 or 18k like you do at closer ranges now then the he isn't that great and then the 25 second reload time on top of all that that might just be the nail in the coffin for the ship in the current meta but in the matches where you can kite for a bit turn around push get in close get, some, get in some close quarters action she's pretty darn decent in my mind however i wouldn't recommend her as an early pickup for your large cruisers or super cruisers whatever we're calling these things she's good situationally but un and that's unfortunate that so many ships we can say that about they're great situational ships but in most matches they're just kind of uh but anyway guys this is my two cents in the car no let me know what you guys think about her in the comments down below hope you guys enjoyed have a wonderful rest of your week and hope to catch you guys in the next one